Hello and welcome back to my channel, or welcome to my channel if you're new here. If you like what you see, don't forget to like and subscribe. It helps the YouTube algorithm know that the content is useful and promotes it to others. If you don't like it, let me know about it in the comments. If you still don't have a Star Citizen account, use my referral link in the description below or the code on screen to snag yourself some extra starting credits. Now on with the video. So let's see if we can explain what all that stuff you see is. When seated in the pilot seat of a ship, you'll see two things, the holographic HUD and the MFD panels. All of the vehicles in the game generally have some sort of HUD or heads-up display. There are slightly different ones, but for ships, you have the hollow display, which is in the front and center. This contains quite a bit of information, so I'll try to be brief and not go too fast. Directly in the center, we have the crosshair and any immediate warnings or alerts. The crosshair display will change slightly depending if you're in gimbaled mode or not. To either side of the crosshair is the pitch indicator, which shows your pitch angle in degrees compared to a level flight. It will rotate around the center as you roll the ship. In the top center, we have our ship signature values. These are, from left to right, the infrared profile, cross-section profile, and the electromagnetic profile. The numbers can be toggled on and off in the settings. These values impact at what distance other ships will detect you when passive scanning. Just below that is our compass heading indicator. In space, this doesn't really make a lot of sense, but on a planet or moon, it gives you a functional compass to use. On the left side, we have the velocity, which indicates our movement speed in meters per second. You can see the little square symbol just below the red section, which indicates the current speed limit. The blue section indicates the speed at which the ship will be most responsive to maneuvering thrusters. This is the SCM, or safe combat maneuvering speed. This speed varies from ship to ship. At higher speeds, attempting to maneuver will put high g-forces on the pilot and could potentially cause you to black out. The little arrow indicator is just a simple slide that shows a quick reference of the current velocity out of the vehicle's maximum. Further to the left, we have the thrust indicator. The value here will show how much thrust is being applied by a white slider that goes up and down. At the top is a small section for afterburner, which uses the boost, activated with the shift key. Left of that is the actual boost meter. The visibility of this can be set to always on or only shown when not full in the settings. Below that is our simple state indicators. VTOL, which is a vertical takeoff and landing. Not all ships have this mechanic, and for those that do, this shows the toggle state of it. Then we have the coupled mode indicator, state, uh, indicated by CPLD. This could get into a lengthy explanation that I don't think I could do justice. So I'll put a link in the description to a web page that hopefully can. You can toggle this mode with left alt C. Next to that is ESP, which is enhanced stick precision. In the simplest of terms, it's the game reducing the sensitivity of your movement when your crosshair is over your selected target. This is so you don't overshoot it too quickly from a high sensitivity input. Then we have our landing gear state indicator simply labeled gear. To the right side, we have the altimeter, which, when you're in atmosphere, will show you your distance above the surface in meters. We also have the G-force meter and the G-safe indicator. When G-safe is on, the ship computer will try and prevent you from making maneuvers which put deadly G-force on the pilot. There's a hotkey that can be set to toggle this on and off. Further to the right, we have our weapon details. This is any ballistic or laser weapons by name and ammo count. Each column represents a firing group. The left one is group 0, while the right one is group 1. Using the mouse, group 0 fires with the left mouse button and group 1 with the right. Some ships will default different weapons to different groups. You can either fire them separately or you can bind both to fire with the same button. You can also use the MFD to change the groups, which I'll cover in a minute. Below that, we have our fuel meters for hydrogen and quantum. We then have the ship's gimbal mode. States can be lock, auto, and target. This mode can be toggled with the G key. Then we have the decoy counter showing how many flare countermeasures remain. These can be dropped by tapping H. Then the noise countermeasures, which are used to help prevent enemies from lo locking on with radar. Uh, drop those with J. And then finally we have this weapon stagger toggle indicator. If you have slower firing weapons like cannons, you can set them to stagger mode, which means they'll fire alternating instead of pulse firing at the same time. Finally, right on the bottom center, we have the 3D holographic radar. Some ships may have a flat radar instead, which is a non-holographic 2D representation. Next up, we have the ship's multifunction displays, or MFD. 
Different ships have a different number of displays and positioning. Depending on the seat station, such as pilot, support, turret, etc., the supported modes vary. You can click the menu button on the display by holding F and using the cursor mode to click it. This will allow you to see the mode selection for that display. For the pilot, you have access to comms, self status, power, target, shields, weapons, and heat, which is not pictured in the video. Some of them have sub panels with more options like the power one, which allows you to power cycle individual components like this. Or the weapons panel, which allows powering individual weapons on and off and changing the firing groups like this. So I hope this video was helpful to you. If it was, I would really appreciate a like and subscribe. It'll let me know that I should keep doing videos like this. And until next time, be safe in the verse.